for the privilege you have to be in his presence. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Lift your hand and glorify the name of the Lord. He is worthy of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor, all the adoration. Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor, give him all adoration. Our Father, we give you the praise. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. Worthy of all the honor and all the adoration. We celebrate you, Jesus. Father, we are thankful. We honor you. We glorify you. We celebrate you. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor and the adoration. Makale Kredia, Gagato Nabatane, Lebrodiak Tala Shudia. We are so thankful, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Ragalate Klediak Teri Ambarado, Klediak Taladoshi Ambarada, Maradia Gandrobo, Shidiangaradikata. Thank you, mighty God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Tonight is a special service. God has ordained it as a feet washing service. And any time God has a sudden change, it means something must suddenly change. In a moment, I'd like you to speak to God. Lord, this night, visit me. Lift your voice and pray. This night, in this service, visit me. I've come for an encounter. This must bring about a sudden change. Something must change for me suddenly. Something must change for me dramatically. Something must change for me in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. Pray from the depth of your heart. I'm here for a sudden visitation. Sudden transformation, sudden elevation, sudden liberation. Lift your voice, Lord. It must happen for me suddenly, not gradually, immediately. Let God hear the voice of your prayer tonight. I've come here for a personal encounter, Lord. A sudden encounter. Jesus, a dramatic encounter. Let it take place for me. Ane keferia bambrodike en keferia en keferia bambrodike kerediash. Father, we give you thanks. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Father, we thank you and we give you the praise. We bless your holy name. You have done all things well. Lord, tonight we are set for you. Visit us again. Let this visitation bring about sudden transformation. Let every hold of the wicked lose its grip on every life tonight. We give you the praise and the glory. We know it is done already. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Somebody believe God, say loud, amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please you may be seated. In his presence, shout glory. glory. I say shout glory. glory. All through this month, we have been looking at God's word entitled Understanding Divine Direction. And this is the last in the series of these teachings. But tonight in particular, we are looking and focusing on unveiling the mystery of feet washing. Unveiling the mystery of feet washing. I like you to be focused tonight because I believe that something dramatic will happen suddenly for us in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 119 verse 133, the Bible makes it clear. Order my steps in your word. So according to scriptures, the word of God is one of God's most potent instruments of direction. In Psalm 119 verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
Again, God is showing us that according to scriptures, his word remains the most potent instrument of direction. According to scriptures, it is failure proof. Isaiah 34 verse 16, seek out of the book of the law and read. None of these shall fail. None shall want a mate. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and his spirit has gathered it. Therefore, it is wisdom for any individual to engage scriptures in determining the step to take concerning every area of life and destiny. It's also important for us to recognize that many times the commandment of scriptures are extremely simple to the point of looking foolish. In 2 Corinthians 11, 3, the Bible says we should not be deceived by the simplicity that is in the gospel. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, it said the natural man cannot descend the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them. He said, because they are foolishness unto him. God's ways are extremely simple. But inside the simplicity is packaged the power. We must therefore understand that no matter how simple an instruction may seem, the, sim the simplicities of scriptures carry the mysteries of heaven. The simplicities of scriptures carry the mysteries of heaven. The Bible tells us in the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 11, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It says, but for them that are without, these things are in parables. One of those mysteries is what we are examining here this evening. And that is the mystery of the feet washing. Extremely simple, but extremely powerful. What is feet washing? What is feet washing? Feet washing is simply a spiritual medium through which we access our parts, that is, our inheritances in Christ. According to scriptures we see in John chapter 13, if you read it and study it from the book of John 13 from verse 3 all the way down to verse 8, Jesus knowing that the Father has given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God. He said, he rise up from supper, lay aside his garment and took a towel, gathered himself and began to wash the disciples' feet. And as he began to do that, he got to Peter. And Peter said, Master, do you wash my feet? And Jesus said, what I do now you do not know, but later you will know after. He said, thou shalt never wash my feet. Because as far as Peter was concerned, it was simply a mark of honor. But Jesus said this, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. According to scripture, therefore, there is a mystery in feet washing that delivers or gives access to our part or inheritance in Christ. Now, what do we refer to when we talk about inheritance? Inheritance refers to number one, goods that accrue to an individual by salvation. The goods that accrue to an individual by salvation. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9. It said, but beloved, we are persuaded of better things of you. And look at that. And things that accompany salvation. So salvation has things that follow it. It has things that are packaged by God to accompany it. It means that no man is to have an empty salvation. Every individual salvation is ordained by God to be loaded with good. He said, the things that accompany salvation. I pray for somebody here tonight that whatever accompanies salvation that is not yet accompanying you will begin to follow you from this night. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Somebody believe it louder, say amen. He said, we are persuaded of you and of the things that accompany salvation, the things that follow after salvation, the things that should be with anyone that is saved. I pray for you again tonight that whatever accompanies salvation that is not yet accompanying you from this night, it will begin to follow after you. <laughs> Number two, what do we refer to by inheritance? Inheritance referred to our, the benefits allotted to a person by reason of family membership. The benefits allotted to a person by reason of his family membership. In a family 
circumstances and they are shared according to each individual's placement in the family. According to scriptures we see in Ephesians chapter is contrary to the glory of God manifesting in any life and any destiny. I stand this night upon this altar and I decree an end to it in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say a loud amen. I said somebody believe it, say a loud amen. You believe it, say a louder amen. This is very important. So we must come to understand that family membership Every individual that is a member of a family has benefits allotted to him and they refer to those as inheritances. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 and verse 15. G, uh, Paul speaking there said, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. That means that everyone that is a child of God is part of the family of God and carries the name of God. The name of God. The same way you have a fish physical surname. It's the same way as a child of God. You have a spiritual surname. And the spiritual surname is the name of God because God is our father. That's why Paul said, therefore, this cause I bow my knees unto God. He said, and the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only him now, but of whom all the whole family, both the ones that are already in heaven and those of us that are left on the earth, we are named. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That means that every one of us belongs, everyone that is born again, a child of God, belongs authentically to the family of God. Shout hallelujah. So we have seen two important definitions of what inheritance means. Inheritance are the goods that are allotted to you by salvation. Inheritance are the benefits that are allotted to you by reason of your membership of the family. Your membership of the family. You and I can agree that no matter how close a family friend is, he is not a partaker in inheritance sharing. Every time there is a sharing of inheritances, no matter how close your acquaintance may be, they are not part of the sharing of the inheritance. It is a family affair. In the same way, the inheritances that God has available, they are family affairs. They are only there for those who are part of the family. Now, therefore, the question will now be, how do I take delivery of our inheritance? How can I take delivery of my inheritance in Christ? If indeed there are things that accompany salvation, which ought to accompany me, how, how can I take delivery of my own inheritance? Number one key, which is what we have emphasized so far, you must belong to the family. You must belong to the family. In other words, you must be born again. You must be born again. John chapter 3 and verse 3. 
you must be born again. Very, very, I say unto you, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12 and 13. The Bible says there, Colossians 1, 12 and verse 13. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Only those that are in light, the ones that are saints, called of God, the ones who are born again can be partakers of the inheritance. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Is somebody getting what God is saying tonight? So you must first of all be part of the family. Without being part of the family, you are not qualified to be a partaker of that which God has in store for us. Number two key is that you must believe in the finished work of Christ. You must believe in the finished work of Christ. Why? Every one of our inheritances are simply packages delivered to us by the finished work of Christ. Jesus made a very striking statement in the book of John chapter 19 and verse 30. At the end of all of his ordeal, he cried out with these words, It is finished. It is finished. With those statements, Jesus was signifying the conclusion of an assignment, the conclusion of a work. And that work brought about the delivery of our inheritances. The Bible says in the book of Re Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12, Revelation 5 and verse 12, he said, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Why? To receive power and riches and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessings. These are seven classified packages that belong to every believer by redemption. But you must believe in the finished work of Christ. Because if you look at what the scripture said there, it said, what is the lamb that was slain? The work of Christ was for him to lay down his life. And as he laid down his life, the Bible said, he was slain to receive. And these are the seven things he was slain to receive. He did not, he did not die to receive those things for himself. No. Because he had those things for himself before. Was he not powerful before he came? He was. Was he not enriched before he came? He was. Was he not wise before he came? It was the wisdom and the power of God. So why did he die to receive those things? He died to receive them for you and for me. That is why the Bible says, if you look at the book of Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, Jesus speaking said, Behold, I give unto you now power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So number one package was the package of power. Maybe you are being confronted in one area of your life or the other. And it looks as if the enemy is gaining an upper hand. The only solution to resistance is power. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 110 verse 1 to 3. It said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. He said, but the Lord will send the rod of his strength. Out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In Psalm 66 and verse 3, the Bible says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto you. I don't know what is resisting you. I don't know what is confronting you. But tonight, as there is a restoration of your inheritance of power, I see you entering into dominion in the name of Jesus. I said, I see you entering back into dominion in the name of Jesus. I see you entering back into dominion in the name of Jesus. So, one of the finished works is the package of power. When Jesus was on the earth, he was the epitome of power. He said to those men, he said, don't think you can take my life away from me. No man has capacity to take my life. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. That is, I'm not living at the mercy of anything. I have power and he said, hearing does the Father love me because I laid down my life. Nothing will take your life from you. Nothing will take your health from you. Nothing will take your possession from you because by this nice encounter, um, encounter there shall be an initiation into power. Somebody believe it, say a louder amen. I said somebody believe it, say a louder amen. 
Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. So number one thing we see there is power. Number two thing we saw there are riches. According to the scripture there, Revelation chapter 5 verse 12, remember, we're looking at those seven classified inheritances. He said he came to receive power and riches. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, he said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. You are ordained for riches. Therefore, whatever is hanging around your life to enforce poverty is overturned tonight. Somebody believe it, say a louder amen. He came so that you can be rich. He came so that you can escape poverty. He came so you can enter prosperity. Third John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and that you be in health even as your soul prospers. You are ordained by God for prosperity. You are ordained by God for plenty. The Bible says in Psalm 112 verses 1 to 3, he said, blessed is the man, he said, that feared the Lord and that delighted greatly in his commandment. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endured forever. I pray for somebody here tonight that by this encounter, scarcity comes to an end forever. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, you take it down from verse 7 all the way down to verse 10. The scripture said, every man according as he proposes, let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, but for God, love it, a cheerful giver. And look at verse 8. God is able to make all grace abound, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. In other words, there is a grace that Jesus came to bring that carries wealth in it. He said, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, say with me, always, having all sufficiency, not scarcity. He said, in all things, may abound to every good work. Every good work. Having more than enough for whatever needs to be done. That is God's ordination for you. I pray for you again tonight. Whatever is contrary to prosperity, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I said whatever is contrary to prosperity, be destroyed tonight in the name of Jesus. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 down to verse 21. He said, cry thus saying, thus said the Lord of hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and he shall yet choose Jerusalem. He said, but I lifted up my eyes and I beheld and I saw four horns. He said, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what are these? And he answered, these are the horns which have scattered Judah and Israel and Jerusalem. And I looked and I saw four carpenters and I said, who are these? And he said, those are the horns that scattered Jerusalem and Judah that no man was able to lift up their head. He said, but these four carpenters have come to freedom. Tonight, whatever represents the horns of the Gentiles that are there to scatter and not allow you to gather, that are there to resist your rising, to resist your lifting, tonight, by this encounter, I decree them scattered in the name of Jesus. I decree them scattered in the name of Jesus. I decree them scattered in the name of Jesus. I decree them scattered in the name of Jesus. I decree them scattered in the name of Jesus. Shout glory. glory. Now, Nahum, Nahum chapter 2. You take verse 1 and 2. You will see that according to scriptures, he said, and he that dasheth in pieces is come bef up before thy face. He said, keep the munition. Watch the way. Make thy loins, thy loins strong. He said, fortify thy power mightily. Verse 2. He said, for the Lord has turned away the excellency of Jacob and the excellency of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out. There are, there are forces of the enemy with an agenda to make you empty. But tonight, by this encounter that you are having, the emptiers shall be scattered in the name of Jesus. 
I said the emptier shall be scattered in the name of Jesus. Whatever will not come to you by choice, tonight must happen by force. And by the encounter you are having by the word of the Lord and by the feet washing mystery, I see you walking gallantly into affluence. Number four package with number three package we see there. He said, what is the lamb that was slain to receive power, to receive riches, and to receive wisdom, to receive wisdom, to receive wisdom. In the book of First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24, the Bible tells us there. He said, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power and the wisdom of God. One of the packages of redemption is wisdom. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 16, it said, but you have the mind of Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, it said, God has not given you the spirit of, of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind, supernatural mentality, thinking at heaven's frequency. Whatever is challenging you mentally, standing against your intelligence, standing against your, your academic performance, standing against your capacity to think creatively, by this night's encounter, I decree destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold of the mind that has imprisoned your mental capacity. He said, for casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the name of the Lord. He said, I'm bringing every thought into obedience of Christ. Therefore, whatever has caged you mentally, not allowing you to think creatively, not allowing you to be able to have liberty in your mindset. By this night's encounter, I decree destroyed in the name of Jesus. I decree destroyed in the name of Jesus. According to that scripture, you are not a candidate for mental blockage. According to this scripture, you are not a candidate for confusion. Because wisdom is profitable to direct. A man with wisdom is a man with answers. It's not a man who is confronted and does not know what to do. The Bible speaking concerning Jesus said in John 6, 6, he said he himself knew what he would do. From tonight, you will never be confused again. I said, from this night, you will never be confused again. So your package in redemption includes power, riches, it includes wisdom, but also according to that scripture, I said, and to receive strength. Strength talks about vitality. It talks about might, energy. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5, the Bible says there, it said that he was despised and rejected, a man acquainted with sorrow. He said in verse 4, he said, but he had borne our griefs. He carried our sorrows. You did esteem him smitten and, you know, stricken of God. He said, however, in verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He said he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And First Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, ye were healed. By redemption, there is a package for your healing. You are not ordained to be a weakling. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17, himself took our infirmities. You are not a candidate for infirmity. Therefore, tonight, whatever represents infirmity, sickness, disease, pain, discomfort, by this encounter, I decree the yoke broken. <laughs> Hear what Jesus said. He met a woman for 18 years. She was bowed down like this. She could in no wise lift up herself. And she kept going to the synagogue. And one day she appeared there. And here comes Jesus. And then people began to say, Why is it that this woman needs to be healed on the Sabbath day? But look at the response of Jesus. And Jesus answered them and said, Thou hypocrite, will you not on the Sabbath day lose your ox and your ass from the store and lead them to the watering? He said, And Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has illegally tied, be loosed? Ought not this woman, this woman that is a daughter, that was what made her a candidate, a daughter of Abraham. And my Bible tells me that we that are in Christ are Abraham's seed. 
That means that you are not a candidate for infirmity. The woman was tied down illegally. I've come to announce to you that whatever is tying you is illegal. And tonight, that illegal bondage must break. 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 break. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Strength, 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 strength. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Strength. You are not a candidate for weakness, not sickness, not disease, not discomfort. Therefore, tonight, your liberty is established. I said, tonight, your liberty is established. But it goes on beyond that. And he goes on to say, power, riches, wisdom, strength, and honor. 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 John chapter 12 verse 26, Jesus speaking there said, he said, and if a man serve me, let him follow me. He said, for where I am, there shall my servant be. And if any man, how many men? If any man serve me, him will my father honor. John chapter 5 verse 44. The Bible said, yeah, they which seek honor one from another and you receive not the honor that cometh from God. When God honors a man, this honor is not permitted around him. Honor is a positional thing. Honor was put on Jesus and it was demonstrated in his enthronement. It means that every one child of God is ordained for a throne. Is ordained for a throne. Therefore, I decree tonight that by the encounter you are having upon this mountain, the throne ordained for you shall be ascended. I said the throne ordained for you shall be ascended. The throne ordained for you shall be ascended. I said the throne ordained for you shall be ascended. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. Revelation 5 and verse 10. He said, and he has made us unto our God. Kings and priests. And we shall reign. Not when we get back to heaven. But while we are right here on the earth, we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. Revelation 11 and verse 15. It said the kingdoms of the world shall soon become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And wherever he is the king, we are there to reign with him. Therefore, if the kingdoms of the earth are part of his kingdoms, then we are to reign on the earth. That is reigning in academics, reigning in politics, reigning in business, reigning in industry, reigning in career. I see that becoming your own portion from now. I said, I see that becoming your portion from now. Zechariah chapter 8 from verse 20 to 23. Verse 23 in particular, I said, 10 men shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew saying, we will go with you because we have heard, we have heard. Your testimony is sounding loud. We have heard that God is with you. Your testimony has preceded your arrival. We have heard of you. We have been told of you. They have announced your coming before you arrived. He said, we have heard that God is with you. There are people hearing me tonight that nobody knows you now. But very shortly from now, not too long from this moment, not too long from this hour, great men will begin to introduce themselves to you. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Not too long from now, those men of renown, the Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 15, it said, you that was hated and forsaken, that no man went through thee, I have made thee, I have made the same you, an eternal excellency, the joy, the joy of many generations. I pray for you tonight that this nice encounter ushers you back into honor. I said it ushers you back into honor. It ushers you back into honor. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Take your seat. Not just that, but he said, power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and glory. Glory. Glory is the only word that is used to describe God's presence. Glory. Glory is beauty. Glory is ambience. When a person is said to carry glory, 
it means is far from shame. Glory. Glory. An inheritance packaged by Christ. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Why? Through the knowledge of him that has called us not to shame, but to glory, not to disgrace, but to glory, not to rejection, but to glory and virtue. Glory and virtue. That means when glory comes, shame goes. When glory comes, shame goes. The same way light and darkness cannot mix is the same way glory and reproach cannot mix. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Anytime light comes, darkness goes. Anytime glory comes, shame goes. From tonight, as glory comes upon your life, I see shame and reproach disappearing forever. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, it said, we all will behold him as in a glass. The glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. That is from one level of glory to another level of glory. Not from glory to shame. Not from grace to grass. But from glory to glory. From grace to grace. From level to level. From testimony to testimony. From lifting to lifting. From promotion to promotion. From turn around to turn around. Somebody believe me, say it louder. Amen. amen. Glory is what you use to describe a life that never goes backward. The path of the just is like a shining light. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. More and more. And you belong to a commission that has never known a better yesterday. It means you are not permitted to keep seeing any mixture. Neither are you permitted to keep seeing any regression. You are not to go forward and backward. You are to go forward and forward. You are, go, you are to go up and up. They say, what, where can you go from here? Only forward. Where can you go from here? Only upward. Where can you go from here? Only higher. It is all about continuous progression. Continuous advancement. I pray for you again tonight. That by this encounter. There shall be an ushering, of, ushering in. Into the realms of glory. <laughs> Finally number seven. What package again do we see? As part of the finished work of Christ. Is blessing. He said. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessing. And the Bible says in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, it said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, cost is everyone that hangs upon the tree that the blessing, the blessing, the blessing of Abraham shall rest upon the Gentiles. The blessing of God is a very complex substance. Complex. The only way to describe it is by its effect on the life of a man. When you see things going well in a man's life, they say he's a blessed man. He's a blessed man. They see things going well in a family. They say that is a blessed family. Because the blessing of God is a spiritual force that empowers things to go well. It empowers things to go well. Empowers empowerment for things to go well it came on abraham and things went well for him it came on isaac and things went well for him it provoked breakthrough it opened doors it opened wombs everything that you can imagine that was good is loaded inside blessing that is why when people look at good things coming they say these are blessings coming blessings refer to every good thing so this last seventh one is a sum is a, is a summarized package of every good thing that a man can desire. Remember the Bible says that the, the lion shall, the young lion shall hunger, shall, shall, shall test and suffer hunger. He said, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Good things will continuously be around them. 
Psalm 34 and verse, 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 verse 10. And Psalm 23 and verse 16. And verse 6, sorry. Remember, it said there, surely, surely, goodness, good things, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From this night, that will become your experience. So these seven classified packages are made available by redemption as part of the operation of the finished work of Christ made available for you and for me. And none of them shall be missing in our lives. Yes. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Yes. So we said that you must belong to the family. Number two, you must believe in the finished work of Christ. And under that, we have those seven points. And then number three now, you must believe the mystery of the feet washing. Remember what the scripture said earlier? It said, Peter said, Lord, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I wash thee not, you have no part in me. You must believe in the mystery of the feet washing. Remember, believe, the Bible said, blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance of the things that were told her by the Lord. So inside this mystery is the key to receive whatever is missing among your packages in redemption. As your feet are washed tonight, perhaps maybe you are not walking in the realm of power you ought to. You'll be stepping into power tonight. Maybe you are not walking in the realm of wisdom that you ought to. You'll be stepping into wisdom tonight. Maybe you are not in the realm of affluence. Scarcity still looks like it's hanging around you. You'll be stepping into affluence tonight. Maybe there is still sickness in your body. Somebody shared the testimony we read this night about coming to the feet washing service, having been ridden with uterine cancer. And she stepped in and she said something like electric shock went through the body. And from there, the healing began. Maybe there is sickness in your body as you step into the water tonight. There shall be healing coming your way. Yeah. Remember the man at the, at, at the pool of Bethesda. As he said, everyone that steps in, they were made whole. As you step in tonight, you shall be made whole. Yeah. Maybe there is honor that has eluded you. Positions have not found you. Every time there is opportunity for promotion, you are overlooked. Everybody forgets you when it's time for lifting. But tonight, a mark of honor is coming upon your life. Yeah. Maybe glory has eluded you. Shame seems to be trapping you on every side. But by this nice encounter, because when glory comes, shame goes. As the glory of God comes upon your life, shame shall be going forever. Yeah. And finally, the blessing of the Lord, the one that makes rich and has no sorrow with it, that makes life good, that makes it easy, that makes progress, your identity. I see that coming upon you tonight. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So believe in the mystery. And then finally, believe in God for the confirmation of his word. Believe in God for the confirmation of his word. Believe in God for the confirmation of his word. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Shout hallelujah. So tonight, what must I expect? What must I expect? Three particular things. One, any missing part of your inheritance, expect it to be restored. Any missing part of your inheritance. Two, what must I expect? The reception of your quantum leap rewards. You have been engaging, it is your right. So you can expect the release and the, re and the reception of your quantum leap rewards. Three, what must I expect? Expect impartation of divine strength to continue to ride upon your high places in the quarter that is ahead. We're entering into the last quarter of this year. There is empowerment required for you to maintain your high places, to maintain your position, and to maintain your engagement. That impartation of strength is coming your way tonight. Yeah. Say with me, this is my night. Yeah. Lift up your hand to heaven and give God thanks. Father, thank you for your word. Give you praise and all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very quickly in a moment, we are going to be going into the mystery of the feet washing. But before we do that, if you are here, you are not born again. You are not yet part of the family of God. Don't miss out when you can actually step in. The choice is yours. If any man accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, believing in his heart, confessing with his mouth publicly, that individual becomes a child of God. Wherever you are tonight, you are not born again. 
you are not yet part of the family of God. Or you say, Pastor, I don't even know whether I'm saved or not. This is not the time to be living by assumption. This is the time to be living by assurance. Wherever you are, quickly rise on your feet. You are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to make him the Lord and Savior of your life. Quickly rise on your feet. I want to pray with you. It will be a new day. You can't afford to miss it. Tonight is your night. Quickly, on your feet, all over this place. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Quickly on your feet. Also, there are those who are here tonight. And you know that you are not right with God. You need to rededicate your life to Jesus. You have missed it. You have gone off course. God is not pleased with you. You have lost that genuine connection. Tonight is your opportunity to reconnect. Whenever a cable is out of connection, power cannot flow through it. If you are not genuinely connected, you have disconnected in your heart and you need to reconnect with God. You need to get it right. I'd like you to quickly rise on your feet. You say, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus, both here at the youth chapel and also in all the various locations. Quickly rise on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone in the first and second call, please make your way quickly to the altar. I want to pray with you. A new beginning is coming your way right now. A new beginning right now. Come on, make your way quickly. God bless you. Make your way quickly. Are you giving Jesus that hand of praise? All over in all the various zonal centers, make your way quickly to the altar. Jesus is waiting for you. What a night. What a night. Are you clapping for Jesus? He's still saving, delivering. He's still setting free. He's still setting free. He's still setting free. Make your way quickly. God bless you. Do it quickly. Hasten your steps. Hasten your steps. God bless you. 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 If you are still sitting down and you know you need to be here, I lose you now. Rush down. Rush down. Tonight is your night. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. For those of us in front, please place your right hand on your chest and say these words after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I know that I'm a sinner, but I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for these precious ones all over in the various zonal centers that have come to receive you. Lord, I decree that the grace to maintain their work with you be released upon each one of them. No going back. No more compromise. Grace to run this race productively. Let it answer for them. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Congratulations. What a day. Congratulations. Please go after the kingdom friends. Go after the kingdom friends. They'll give you some information and return to your seat. All the various locations, please also follow after the kingdom friends and follow their instructions. Everybody rise on your feet tonight. Are you ready to pray for those three things? I'd like you to pray in a moment. The prayer will be swift because we are going into this mystery very quickly. Lord, according to the word that we have heard, any one of your missing inheritances, I'd like you to target them by name. You know them specifically now, seven of them. Whichever one is missing, Lord, by this feet washing, I receive my own back. Lord, my quantum leap package reward, I receive it back. And the strength required to continue riding ride upon my high places, I receive it now. Lift your voice and pray. Begin to pray from the depth of your heart. My inheritance of power, inheritance of riches, inheritance of wisdom, of strength, of honor, of glory, of blessing. Lord, I receive my portion. It will not be taken from me. It will not be missing in my life as I step into the water tonight. I'm stepping into my inheritance. I'm stepping into my inheritance. Begin to call on God specifically. Luparane, enkradiatada, leroshade. Lord, my inheritance of power, my inheritance, oh Lord of riches, my inheritance of wisdom, my inheritance of strength, my inheritance of honor, my inheritance of glory, my inheritance, oh Lord of blessing. 
I take on, I take hold of my portion. I take hold of my portion. I take hold of my portion. Le brade keteria manatola. Le lo ke ko kapade. Le krane ketele kredia kalatola. I take hold of my portion tonight in the name of Jesus. Le ro ke ne predi ke ne bergeriasha. Manto le predi ke ko tamadi ke ko tamadi ke ko tamadi. I take hold of my portion tonight. I take hold of my portion. I take hold of my portion. Lord, my quantum leap testimony, my quantum leap part, package, I take hold of it tonight. I take hold of it tonight. Lord, the strength required to maintain my high places, I take hold of it. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In the precious name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In a moment, we are going forth to begin to partake of the mystery of the feet washing. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, the waters are blessed. As we step into the waters tonight, let everything we have called upon you for tonight begin to answer supernaturally. The same way that angel steered the waters and everyone began to pick their portion. Tonight, let there be a steering of the waters. As the waters, Lord, are touched tonight, let everyone's packet be released supernaturally. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Quickly, all the officials will get down to the various locations and we'll begin to engage every one of us. You are praying in the spirit. You are praying in your understanding. You are engaging tenaciously. Take your seat and then you'll be ushered in the right time. The choir will be leading us as we're celebrating God. You are ushered at the right time but doing it in the spirit. And as you do so, your visitation shall be secure. Thank you, Jesus. Let's move swiftly, move swiftly, move swiftly. Officials, very quickly. I am going higher. I am going higher. For the Lord is on the throne. I am going higher. I am going higher. I am going higher. I am going higher.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the strength of my shield. Gives the power to run. Hallelujah. 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 I am free, sir. I am free from condemnation. Oh, hey. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I can run through a troop. Don't be poor by the walls. Hallelujah. has walked into their portion shout a loud hallelujah lift your hand and begin to glorify God specifically for whatever you have picked from tonight give him the glory oh thank you Lord for the blessings of the night all the packages of the finished work of Christ that are made completely available to me. The package of power, the package of wisdom, the package of riches, the package of strength, the package of honor, the package of glory, the package of blessing. Oh, my Father, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. Are you giving God thanks tonight? Thank him again for the release of your quantum leap testimony. Our father, you spoke concerning the year. And here we are tonight. You have caused us to step into the manifestation of our quantum leap testimony. Begin to thank him for strength. Strength like the unicorn. Our father, we thank you for the renewal of strength. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, mighty God, in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you have prayed and as you have thanked, every subject of your supplication and subject of your appreciation is converted to manifestation. In the name of Jesus Christ, from now, begin to walk in the reality of everything you have cried to the Lord for tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it is done. Say loud, Amen. Have you picked your portion yet? Have you received your miracle yet? Shout a loud amen. It is done. Watch out, it's already happening. I said, Watch out, it's already happening. It's already happening. It is already happening. It's already answering for you in the name of Jesus. So it is done. In Jesus' precious name, you believe God, say loud amen. Jesus is Lord. Well, the race, we have received fresh empowerment for the continuation of the race. 
And each one of us shall be prize winners in that race. Amen. The schedule continues. Our hour of prayer in the morning, covenant hour of prayer, 5.30 in the morning. Tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, we are expected to be in God's presence as we continue in the pursuit of God's agenda. And remember, there's consistency in our followership of all of the plans and the agendas that God has in store for us. The good news is our Father will be shortly back. He's on his way back already. So be expectant. Amen. Be expectant. He's coming back with fresh fire. Praise God. I said praise God. And Saturday, please, let's take note. Saturday, we'll be having our monthly empowerment summit. Saturday, empowerment summit, WSF empowerment summit will take place at 6 a.m. So, covenant hour of prayer, as usual, when we have that, takes place at 6 a.m. I hope that's clear to us. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise the Lord. Also, we'll be having the same Saturday, our Wolfby um, water baptism session. So for those who are not baptized in water, if, even if you are not part of the Wolfby class, you need to be baptized in water. You have not been baptized since you believed. That is an opportunity in any one of our Wolfby facilities. You go there, water baptism will be taking place on Saturday. Praise the Lord. Is somebody blessed tonight? Lift your hand and wave your hand to Jesus. Glorify him for the blessing. Glorify him for the blessing. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise, all the glory, the honor, the adoration. Thank you, mighty God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Go in peace. Return with your testimonies. In Jesus' precious name. You believe, say a louder amen. With joy, we share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. From glory to glory and from glory to glory. Congratulations. Congratulations somebody as you go. Be blessed.